What are the differences between a regular software engineer and an embedded software engineer? Well, today you are one lucky person because that's exactly what I'm going to be talking about. My name is Grady Eilig. I'm an embedded software engineer and make sure you subscribe for more amazing content. Both of these fields are software engineering and I have no doubt about it. But to really understand what is the difference between the two, let's do some comparison. Knowledge of hardware. Embedded software engineers typically have some level of knowledge about the hardware they work with. Now, it doesn't have to be a deep level knowledge, especially if you work for a larger company where you don't have to wear 100 hats in your position. But knowing how to read some schematics and data sheets, understanding the architecture you work with, and being able to use an oscilloscope or a logic analyzer are some things that an embedded software engineer knows how to do. Not every embedded software engineer knows, but it's, it's pretty typical to know that. On the other hand, like this one, and when a regular software engineer writes and builds their code, there's really no need for them to understand how the hardware or the architecture might work. Lately, the embedded industry has been driving more towards simplifying this process so that the embedded developers wouldn't need to know so much about the hardware and making it more comparable to regular software development. Hence why I believe that probably 10 years from now, there won't be need to know so much about the hardware as we need to know today as an embedded developer. And even today we don't need to know so much about the hardware as the embedded software engineers like 10 20 years ago had to know i think the, the process is just getting more streamlined so it would be easier to do the development and make it more maintainable more generalized make it easier for people to learn and access level of cares within tools used embedded tools are often outdated and might make you feel like you're going back in time 20 years at least that's how I feel sometimes. General software engineering tools are typically latest and greatest. They run nice, they look nice, and everyone is happy. This is why I only use embedded tools for compiling and debugging. The rest of the work is done using Microsoft Visual Studio Code or just Visual Studio Code. Safety, embedded software engineers can often work with systems and devices where safety is a huge concern like brake systems for cars, planes, or trains, or medical devices, or anything like that, that might result in harming a human being in some way, or any, anyone else getting harmed. Because of this, these systems can have very tight real-time timing constraints. This is not the case for regular software engineers. Yes, you might have cases where mistakes in the software can cause losses in the money, but typically, this won't result in human beings getting hurt. Resources. Embedded software engineers work with limited resources for memory, processor speed, or even power consumption. Whereas when doing software development for a web or a PC app, this is typically not an issue because the PCs run about 20 times faster with multi-core processors and have about 2,000 times more memory and unlimited amount of power. Debugging software can be a pain in the butt for embedded software engineering. The reason for this is because the systems are in real time. So if you're debugging for something and you're looking for it, and you stop the debugger, you might miss that issue that you were looking for. So there are some tools like logic analyzers and oscilloscope that might help debugging in this case. But again, it could be done without them, but it depends on the case and the situation where you're at. It might be faster to use those tools and, and, and if you know how to use them, you can uh, solve the issue quicker. Software engineers typically won't have issues like this because, well, they don't work with real-time systems typically and the debugger environment is more controlled as well. If you have something you would want to add to this video, please feel free to do that in the comment section below. Other than that, I'm out of here. Bye.